Yo, 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 Vistra Fund community. Uh, let's dive deep into developer experience and in particular, Nax Free. My name is Jakub and I am a senior full stack developer at Vista Front. And I'm also a ambassador, uh, an ambassador in both Nax.js community in Storyblock and recently also Avian Payments. What is developer experience? Developer experience in basic words is just how developers uh, are using your product, how efficient, how easy it is for them to use the product, how easy it is for them to customize the product. So basically it's the, it describes the experience the developers have while using or working on your product. So we can see it as a mix of both the user experience, because developers are also users of your software or your product, and the development principles. And they both combined make it that developer experience. And development experience can be achieved by many, many different factors. The easy, easy, easiness of using it, of learning the product, of using it, of customizing it, of uh, how we can extend it, like adding more functionalities to the core concept or the core functionality. And there are actually many, many, many things you can do to improve the developer experience of your product. There is a very good article, uh, which is not as new <laughs> because it's 2017. However, it summarizes very well what your product has to be or has to have in order to be perceived as a very as a product that has very good developer experience. So from things like releasing change logs, migration guides, documentation, videos and so on and so on. If you're looking for a very detailed explanation on what you should what you need in order to have a great developer experience product, you can go there and you will have a lot of answers to the questions. So how does Nax Free improve the developer experience? Let's start with Vit. Vit is a front-end build tool that is not necessarily uh, gl glued to Vue.js ecosystem. You can use it in many different factors, in many different frameworks like uh, React, like Svelte. So it's more like a build tool that improves the developer experience by providing very fast load times of your of your application. So Vit consists of two main factors or main functionalities. One which is boosting your developer experience while developing software in the de development environment and it is a dev server that serves your source file files over native ES modules and also provides a hot module replacement, which is really, really, really fast. And the second one, which is a build command that bundles your code using rollup into a pre-configured, uh, that is pre-configured to output very highly optimized static assets for production. So just to show you a quick example, this is Basically, what is the developer experience while using Vit? We can see that the reloading of the server is takes milli, milli, milliseconds instead of 15 seconds, for example, for the project to reload. And what's funny here, you can, this is a recommendation that I got from Scott Spence. You can check him out in Twitter, at Scott Spence. Uh, he proposed to me that Considering how fast Vit is reloading your server, you can also set a configuration in your development IDE to auto save your files after a certain amount of time. So let's say that you will set this timeout of automatic saving files for about half a second or 0.3 second. What it will happen is that you will have almost instant changes on your website because you will have very fast 
autosave and also very fast save reload, which will cause your changes in the browser almost instant. Next one is full time full, full type tip support. And what it's really interesting about it is that it supports type tip in pages, in components, in composables, so certain files. We will have auto completion, we will have some suggestions of what properties of or what methods we can use from certain libraries or composables components and also in the naxconfig.ts file. So but after creating a very simple Nux free project, we also we already have a TypeScript support in all places we need. So in components, in our review JS files, in our composables, in middleware, and so on and so on, and also in the most important nux.config file. In terms of components, Next automatically imports any components here in our components directory. So whenever we create a new header component inside components directory, it will be automatically imported into our project so that we can use it everywhere in the application. And that's not something new. It was already introduced in the next tool. However, right now, this automatic import also supports view free and also supports functionalities like script setup so that we can define components, pages using script setup and they will all be automatically imported to our application. But auto-importing components can lead to issues because we can import a component that is used in one set in certain place of our application. We can import them or import it in all places, which might not be something that we want. But Nextcore team already figured that out and proposed lazy loading. So lazy loading as a concept allows to dynamically import certain code, in our case, certain component, after it is actually needed. So what will happen here in this example is that the code needed to re render the footer component will be fetched when it will be actually needed. So when user scrolls down to the page, to the end of the page. And how we achieve that? The only thing we need to do is to add lazy prefix before the name of the component. So if we have created the, the footer component, the only thing we need to make it lazy loaded, the dynamic, dynamically imported, is to add the lazy prefix before the name of the component, which is really nice. Next three also uses the concept of composables, and the composables are those functions that allow you to reuse functionality across the app by using a state that is preserved both is preserved on the server side by using the use state composable, and also very useful but built-in composables like use cookie, use request headers, and use Nux app, which was previously used, which previously we were accessing Nux app by calling this.context. And in Nux3 we have access to it by using use Nux app. And we have been using the com concept of composables in View Storefront for a while. So if you have tried View Storefront before, you for sure know uh, things like use product, use category, use search, uh, and it worked very in a very similar way. So we had this certain functionality that allowed us to perceive the state of a product, of a category, over our application. In terms of modules, modules are those functions that allow us to extend the core functionality of Next. So we have the core concept of Next, and let's say that we want to have an integration with a certain third-party library or a certain functionality like PWA, support for internet internationalization, IATN, easier to pronounce. So 
In Next 2 there was this template module repository in GitHub that you could use to create your own modules, your new modules. However, for Nux3, what Nux core team decided to do is to create a new module template called Module Builder that allows you to very easily create new Nux modules with things like out-of-the-box TypeScript support, out-of-the-box build support with unbuild, and in this example, we can see that the define Nux module method accepts few, one object parameter with things like meta, where we can define the name of our module and the config key. The config key is used in the nuxconfig.ts file. So let's say that we have the module that is called my awesome awesome module. So by defining a config key my awesome module in nuxconfig.ts, when we define an object called my awesome module, we can define the settings or the configuration for our module. Apart from meta, we can also define a default options, default configuration. So what happens when a user doesn't provide us any configuration? And finally, the most important step is the setup function that allows us to add plugins, add middleware, add composables, add new components, so that we can wrap all this logic into this module. And you can check it out using the following link. Next offers many, many, many modules. However, not all of them are Nux3 ready. For now, for like today, we have 18 modules working for Nux3 that you can very easily check out using the nux.modules.nux.js.org website that lists all these modules that are available for you. In terms of official modules, like PWA, Image, of that are provided by Nux, the support will be is planned to for, for the next few weeks to be released. However, it's not that easy because these modules provide very very useful functionality, but it also makes it quite difficult to migrate to the newer version. But for sure, it's planned for the next weeks. Apart from the official modules, you can also choose community modules that are created by Nux.js community members. And I will propose you to choose Nux.js Algolia, which is the module that I have created for Nux community, which allows for very easy integration with Algolia search, that allows for very, very fast search, and also support for view instance search. So by importing just this Nux.js Algolia module, you have access to the Algolia API, so you can search very quickly and get the results. And you also have the access to the components. So by importing module, you have the components, you have the data from the search, nothing else is needed. Server endpoints. So server endpoints allows us to add backend logic to our Nux application. So they work. it works quite similar to the server middleware that we used to use in, in Nux2. However, in this case, what will happen is whenever you create a file inside this slash server slash API folder in your root directory, it will be automatically, it will automatically create the endpoints out of it. So let's say that we create a file called test.ts in this directory. Whenever we access slash localhost slash server slash API, or just the server, just the API slash test, what will happen is that we will have the new endpoint created. So inside of it, we can add the logic for database management or adding new records, or maybe providing some um, additional functionalities for our e-commerce or maybe handling, handling some payments, everything that is related to the backend or the server side of our Nux application 
can be added here. And there is a very good introduction into Nux Free Server API by Anthony Fu. I definitely recommend you to check it out. It's only one minute and it shows really well how you can use, how you can utilize the server endpoints to match your needs. So we have um, explained or, or discussed several Nux free features. But there are ma many, many more of them. I just picked the one or selected the ones that I thought are very useful for the developer experience. If you are interested in more and seeing how they work out of, out of the box with a demo, there is a good video by Tim Penix that uh, he introduces some next free features like layouts and explains each of them uh, with a certain demo or data fetching layouts, components, and so on and so on. So what about the state of Nux3? Because we already explained quite a few features, quite a few functionalities that improve the developer experience. So Nux3 is still in beta. However, the release candidate is planned for March, like this March, next month, in a few days, let's say. So uh, we are all waiting for it. The Nux core team is uh, doing their best to deliver the Nux free release candidate as fast as possible, but it takes a lot of work. <laughs> so, however, we can help them because we all can make Nux free the best framework ever. How? First, we can join Nux Discord server and not only join but we can help because in Nux Discord there are many channels that you can help or for, by giving some answers to some certain questions or providing help to certain modules to migrate them to Nux free to build new modules so if you are interested in helping Nux team deliver the best possible framework Nux Discord is definitely the place to go there are already a few RFCs, requests for comments, uh, in Next that you can participate in and give your opinion. Because as many, as many, um, there are many people who have different opinions, different experiences in terms of building software. So the the more the more the discussions, the better the solution, the better the result. Result. So you can participate in them give your opinion, share your thoughts, and even propose some features as well. You can also share Nux free content, like writing an article, or recording a video about something, or giving a talk, such as this one. You can also build modules, because as I mentioned, I have created one. There are many, many people in the Nux community that also created modules, Nux3 or Nux2 modules. So considering how simple it is right now to build new modules using the module builder, it's very, very simple and gives a lot of joy when you have something that works and provides a good value to the developer and the final user. Make sure to give a star to Nux, Nux2, Nux3 and the modules as well. Uh, and also the storefront, because the storefront also uses Next under the hood and utilizes many, many features that we explained today, discussed today. So make sure to give them a star. And that will be it. Thanks very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, features, or, or you would like to, to improve something in what I explained, in what I discussed, you can contact me using the Twitter at the Andrewski, and you can also find me in the Nux Discord channel, in the Viewster from Discord channel, and many, many more. Thanks. Have a new day. Have a good day, and see you.